the Lord. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus, brethren. With me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus, brethren. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Magnify the Lord with me. Exalt the name of Jesus. Oh Lord and God, they are the words of men. You are the only one. There is none. There is none like you. as we are, just take this time to praise God, to thank Him in whatever way you can do that. Many times we do not see reason why we should thank God. But for the very fact that we are standing before Him this morning, just give Him thanks. Don't ask Him for anything, but just thank Him. Thank him for the gift of life. Thank him for the gift of faith. Thank him that in spite of the challenges we are going through in the world, in our country, that we are still close to him. You can thank him for the gift of your parents, husbands, wives, children, family members. Thank him for the gift of your job. You may not be satisfied with that job, but still thank God about it. Thank him about the situation of your businesses. Give him thankful love. Just give God thanks. In doing that, you are giving God what God cannot give to himself. In doing that, you are becoming like David, that the best prayer he knows how to pray is to give thanks to God. Even thank God for your own weakness, that in spite of your weaknesses, you are still able to recognize the importance of God in your life. Thank Him for your strength, that you are able to choose good over evil. Thank God for the gift of your eyes, the gift of your hands, the gift of your body, the gift of your tongue. Thank God. 
for the gift of this community. The gift of this parish that we are able to gather as a community to worship Him. Thank Him for all those who are ministering to you in this particular community. The salutations, the parish priests, all those who are making sure that the body of Christ is received daily in this praying community. For those who sacrifice their time to make sure that you are able to pray. Thank God for them. Heavenly Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us have our seats. Praise the Lord. I decided to magnify the name of God. When I stood at the beginning of the Mass, then I remembered that 10 years ago, I was ordained in this particular church. And each one of you, you made it a beautiful experience for me. I remember that some time back, at least two years ago, or last year, I was also working in this parish. So coming back, I see your faces, and I will say that I see people who are still bouncing in the Lord. Whether the price of well is going to be 1,000, my prayer for you is that you will continue to bounce in the presence of God. Whether people are going to bring down this nation or not, my prayer for you is that your life, the life of the righteous, is in the hands of God, and you will keep on bouncing. It go depend them, and it go to sweet you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I say, wait it, it go to pain them, and it go to sweet you. Amen, somebody. But in bracket, who are the them? I think that is where the problem is coming from. What I want to share with you this morning says, allow the wicked to repent. Amen, somebody. Allow what? Allow the wicked to do what? Repent. Then we may ask ourselves, who are the wicked? Who are the wicked? When we talk about the wicked, we'll be thinking about them. Those who are doing prostitutions, those who are lying, those who are stealing, those who are kidnapping, we consider them to be the wicked people and we exclude ourselves from them. Wickedness is sin against God. Whenever we commit sin against God, it means that we are wicked. Whenever we commit sin against one another, it means that we are wicked. So at the end of the day, the team is saying that allow Father Raphael to repent. Each one of us, we need to repent. Because each time when we think about sinners, we are thinking about them. When they catch a criminal, they put that criminal in the cell. We consider that person to be criminal. Why many people continue to steal as long as they have not been caught? It is those people who are criminals. So today the message says that we should allow one another to repent. We need it. The first reading of today, Wisdom chapter 12. It made us to understand that it is God who created all things. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. God created all things. And when you read Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5, it says, Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you true and true. My dear brothers and sisters, God who created all things does not want to destroy them. And that is the good news. God who created me does not want to destroy me. He did not create me to destroy me. He did not create you to destroy you. And the reading tells us that God governs all things with leniency, with gentleness. Matthew chapter 11, that is how God governs all things. He is careful with me. He is careful with you. He is careful with each one of us. And this is why he will leave 99 sheep in search for one. He left every other thing in search of me. 
He left every other thing in search of you because he does not want to do what? Destroy you. Why this reading of today, wisdom? What happened during that time? The Israelites were complaining to God. What was their complaint? They discovered that the pagans were progressing. Those who do not worship God, they were doing well in their businesses. Those who are not worshiping God, they were doing well financially. Their life we are appearing to be very prosperous. Things we are going on well for them. And yet, they were not worshiping God. Then the Israelites started complaining. Why should you allow these people to be progressing? Why we, who are your worshipers, we are not progressing like them? Then they reminded God, our forefathers told us that you did great things to them. But today, you are not doing any great thing. That was the question they put before God. I know sometimes it's our situation. We compare our lives to the lives of pagans. We say to God, look at my neighbor who does not go to church. Look at my neighbor who does not worship in you. Look at my neighbor who does not pray. This my neighbor is progressing. My neighbor is doing well in his or her business. My neighbor is doing well in his or her education. But me that worship you, that fast and pray, nothing is happening to me. God, why me? So this reading today is telling us we should not compare our lives with the lives of other people. And in this reading, the response started coming. And what is the response? It says that God is always great. No matter what, whether you are doing well or not, God is always great. That is the first part. And the second part is that God does not punish people. He is not there to punish those pagans. No, he gives us time. And the time that God is giving us is for us to come closer to him. It's not a wicked God that wants to punish people the moment you make a mistake. So that is the response. That this God we are talking about is a God who loves those who are good. Is a God who loves those who are bad. Is a God who loves every human being, no matter what. So this is the God we are talking about. And that is the response that was given to these people. He does not love few people. He loves everybody. We ask this kind of question because for us, when we have what we call mundane power, physical power, worldly power, how do we use such power? Many a time we use our power to put people down. Errors. Herod used his own power to kill John the Baptist because John the Baptist spoke the truth. Pilate and the rest of them, they used their power to kill Jesus Christ. That is worldly power. My dear brothers and sisters, what about you and me? How do we use our power? I am a minister. I am a director. I am a president. I am the father of my family. I am this or I am that. How do you use your power? Do you use your power to bring people down? Do you use your power to humiliate people? Do you use your power to force people to recognize you? At the end of the day, you tell them, don't you know who I am? I am is God because he's always present. Amen, somebody. How do we use our worldly power? power. How do we use our physical power? So that is the question that is put before us this morning. For God, he does not use his power the way we use our power, but God is patient with us. God is the owner of all power. But at the end of the day, he waits for us to repent. He waits for us to come back to him. He does not use power to intimidate us. But to conclude this first reading, when we say that God is patient with the wicked, God is not telling us that we need to remain as wicked people. When you die in your wickedness, when I die in my wickedness, I will face 
the consequences. There is no repentance at death. This opportunity is for us to come closer to God. And when I look at your faces, I believe that every one of you present in the house of God, you are very close to God. And I believe that at the end of your journey here on earth, you will find yourself in heaven in Jesus' name. In today's gospel reading, Matthew chapter 13, what happened in this reading? The word of God says that the enemy came to sow Daniel among the wheat that was already sown. That was what the enemy did. The enemy came and he planted what God has not planted. Parents, many a time you wake your children up in the morning. You taught them how to pray. You prepare them to go to school. When they come back from school, you start to advise them. You will say to your children, do not smoke, do not drink, do not join bad gang, do not do what you are not supposed to do. You open the Bible to your children and you share the word of God to them. You bring them to catechism classes. You bring them to church. You advise them, what are you doing? You are sowing good seeds in the lives of these children. So this is what many parents are doing. I experienced the same thing. My parents also sow good seed in me. But sometimes parents are disappointed. At a point in time, even my own parents, they were disappointed in me. Because they will send me to go to school. After they have prepared me, I will go out, I will be walking around throughout the day. I will not go to school. I will go back, I will start to lie to them. One day my mother was hustling, carried the okrika in his head. Around 11, 12, then she found me roaming around the streets. She was so disappointed. She dropped our okrika. She held me, took me to the school, and was begging the teacher to put pepper in my eyes. When I got home, they flogged me very well. And I think I suffered because my dad was a military man. The cushion that was very long stretched my hand like this, stretched like this, stretched like this. And it tied me. I was there for hours. We are against corporal punishment, but that corporal punishment helped me. I started going to school. Don't let me stand here so today. <laughs> Amen. So if my parents were disappointed at that point in time, they said to themselves, we have tried our best and this son of ours does not want to listen. Go away. I don't have your time anymore. Some parents give up on their children. I pray that you should not give up on your children. Why am I saying this? The more you are planting the good seed, when you read John chapter 10 verse 10, the more Satan is also planting the bad seed because he says that the mission of Satan is to destroy whatever good that God has put inside us. Don't give up. Some parents, because of shame, they give up. I have seen some CWO women that stopped going to church because their daughter became pregnant. No, pregnancy is not the sin. It is the act that leads to pregnancy. The moment the seed is sown, start thanking God. Don't stop going to church. Because that child may come up to be a very great child. So what am I trying to say this morning? I am trying to say that sometimes we may do our best. But Satan is also doing his own best to destroy whatever God has planted in our life. But the word of God in 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 says that God wants every one of us to be saved. And it is because of this, God remains patient. He remains patient. In this reading, in the time of Jesus Christ, the people felt that the kingdom of God that Jesus Christ will come with, it means that bad people will not exist. That Jesus Christ will come to kill every one of them. So that was their thinking. That when Jesus Christ comes, the first thing, he will destroy all the wicked politicians. He will destroy all the wicked businessmen. He will destroy all the wicked religious people. But when Jesus Christ came, he started eating with them. He started visiting them. He started keeping company with them. So these people were disappointed. 
Why was Jesus Christ eating with them? Because Jesus Christ wanted them to repent. That is the target of Jesus Christ. So he was very close to those who are poor. In the reading, the parable, the servant went to Jesus and he said to Jesus, I have great interest in this field. Then he said to him, let me uproot the bad fruits. Let me uproot them. But Jesus said to him, be patient. Do not remove them. Do you know the implication? We are the field. And this seed is growing in the same person. When you uproot the bad, it means that you are also uprooting the good. But Jesus said to him, be patient. Allow evil and good to grow together. A time will come when I will do the separation. But this is not the time. Sometimes we are not patient with people who would make mistakes. We become so impatient that we want to destroy them. Patience is a virtue. And this is what Jesus Christ taught us this morning. He said to the servants, be patient. This person who is good also have some bad thing in him. Don't destroy this person because of this thing. No matter how somebody is wicked, there is something good in that person. Amen, somebody. No matter how somebody is good, there is something that is bad in that person. And this is why Jesus says, allow this person to grow, that the time will come that the separation will take place. And we conclude with this. When we think about good and evil, there is something we need to note. The separation or the line that separates good from evil, it is not based on person to person. I am good, you are bad. It is not true. It is not based on nation to nation. That country is good, we are bad. It is not true. It is not based on church to church. That church is good, this church is bad. It is not true. The line that separates good and bad is in our hearts. It is inside us. It is not outside us. As a person, you may decide to remain bad. As a person, you may decide to remain good. But it takes place inside you. Because sometimes people are running. In Nigeria, with the Jaguar go America? Because America is better than Nigeria. It could be economically. But morally, they may not be better than us. So the line that separates good from evil is not a nation upon nation. It is inside the heart of every individual. Dear friends, our Lord Jesus Christ has sown good seed in you. Will you allow that seed to germinate? Amen, somebody. Will you allow the seed to germinate? Or you want the seed that Satan has sown in you to germinate? Which of the seed do you want to germinate in your lives? My prayer is that the good seed that Jesus has sown in each one of us will germinate in us through Christ our Lord.